G'day fellas, welcome back to another video on the brand new civilization Ethiopia. Today we're going to be taking a look at the units that you're going to have available to you once you've reached the second age, as well as all the military units that you're going to have available to you throughout the game as the Ethiopians. So let's get into it, starting with uh, the very first point, which is when you age up to the second age, you're going to have an option, something that sits before you and says, uh, you need to pick one of these alliances. Now, depending on the alliance that you pick, will unlock certain units for you. As an example, if we take a look down here in the bottom left-hand corner for the Somalis, if you go with the Salamis, uh, the Sol if you go with the Salamis, if you go with the Salamis, if you go with the Somalis, okay, you are going to unlock Somali Darud Militias and Somali Issa Warriors. Okay, that's the first thing. All right, now that's at the palace. Okay, now there there's a couple of units that we're going to have to talk about, buildings that we're going to have to talk about. The, the other uh, units that you're going to have here, so the Conquistadors at the palace, and then also uh, here, so you can get the Cannoneers at the palace, and then unlocks the Sudanese Devrages at the palace. So for me, as an example, I love the Cannoneer. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do the Cannoneer at the palace. Let's do that. We'll go up with Portugal. Now, obviously, uh, with, with your age up bonuses, that's going to provide you um, in, in specific age up bonuses as well. That's something that you're going to need to consider, but let's just get into the military. Let's talk a little bit about that and, and see what we've got going for us. So... Upon aging up, uh, we now have access to a building called the Palace. Now, your explorer can build this. It costs 200 wood, 200 coin. And it's basically, think of an agri-fort, but it's smaller, and it's not as cool. You can build four of these guys, okay? So, you watch. They go up quick because I've got the cheats on right now, okay? But you can build up to four of these guys. Very, very cool-looking unit. Uh, and so, I've got four of them up. Keep in mind that they're expensive units, okay? They're, uh, they're 200 wood, 200 coin. And let's take a look at what options we've got in here. Because really, there's not a lot of options at this early stage. So, 3,500 hit points. It's got 30 bombard attack. So, there's the cannoneer that we unlocked. But take a look at the resource that it costs. The resource that it costs is this new resource called influence. So, you can't just build these bad boys with coin, with food. Now, you've got other units that are available in here. So, other units, you've got the levied gunner. So this is a musketeer who loses hit points, becomes less effective over time. So if we train this guy, it's a minute man, okay? You can see him losing hit points, but that's not the only place you can train minute man from. You can actually train minute man from your houses. So if you click levied minute man, there you go. That's correct. The house are probably as well. Oh, and for anybody wondering on YouTube, who was that? That's Fitzbro. Hey, Fitzbro. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? That's okay. That's I'm all right. Uploading to YouTube. That's okay. YouTube. <laughs> you know what? If you don't know who Fitzbro is, check him out in the comments below. I'll make sure I'll leave a pinned comment. It'll be the Fitzbro <laughs> stuff. He's going to be covering this as well because he's got early access. So make sure you check him out. So in addition to that, we've also got the levied spearman and the levied bowman as well. So you can see the units on these guys here. So depending on what you're up against, let's say you're up against a raid, then you can call these. Now you can call these individually. If you call them as a group of five, they're going to train individually. You guys saw right there. So if I turn off speed always wins, uh, you guys will be able to see. Uh, you can only train them individually, uh, which is kind of cool when you think about it, because sometimes you only need one pikeman. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty decent uh, pikeman. Uh, quite cheap when it comes to the resources, so only 65, so pretty decent. Uh, but that's that's all you can train with this at the moment. Now, keep in mind, this also doubles as the saloon, so you can see that we've got access to the Lunschkanakt and the Fusilier. I'm hoping that my pronunciation there was perfect. Uh, so the Fusilier and the Lunschkanakt uh, is what we've got access to at the moment. It could be anything, though. And we've also got access to this unit here, the Gatling Camel. Now, the reason why we've got access to the Gatling Camel is because it is a mercenary, I think. I don't you, I don't think you normally have access to the Gatling Camel. I think it's just today we've got... Or in this game, we've got access to the Gatling Camel because I think it is a an uh, a, uh, a mercenary unit. That I, I'm pretty sure. I'm not, I'm not 100%, though. So, I think you can usually get it in age four. You, you can. That, 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 that's a little bit separate, though. So you, there, there is a uh, a card that you can get in age four, uh, and then you can also get them when you go up to age five as well. And there's actually an age up a, a age five politician that enables you to uh, make them out of them if you don't have access to them uh, th through the RNG mechanic. So that's the first building that you can sort of have in the uh, in in the second age. 
The, the second building that you've got is an outpost building. So if we build it with uh, our villager down here, it takes a while to build, but uh, obviously we've got cheats on, so it's just a, a standard outpost. Oh, we don't actually have cheats on, so uh, it's, it's going to take a while. So this is the watchtower. Uh, so if we turn on uh, speed always wins. So there it is. That's the watchtower. Now this trains units that are outlaws but keep in mind okay your normal outlaw is like it, it's not a really viable unit because it's very population heavy you know it's, it's not particularly good that's not the case with these guys i want you to take a look at the stats for these guys we're going to pause the game we'll take a look at them so your first one is the desert warrior i love this guy 30 food 70 coin only two population it's not that bad it's not that bad it's actually pretty good like, it's not 30 food, 70 coin, 8 pop. It's only 2 pop. It's still, like, it's still quite expensive. But anyway, the next one is the Desert Archer. And then the next one is the Desert Raider. So each of these guys have got different un or different uh, things that they do. So I'll show you exactly how they work. So the first one is the Desert Raider. Now, keep in mind, these are available in Age 2. Okay, we're in Age 2. These are the stats that you're going to get. This unit does siege damage with its attack. So it bypasses... All of those units that have got melee resistance bypasses them completely. It does a siege attack. Now, it, it's not like an Opernik in that it is going to be killing your villagers significantly. If you don't have great coats, it's going to five hit them because your villagers have got melee resist. Okay, these guys have got siege attack. Okay, now it, it gets crazy. All right, we're only at the start. The next thing is, so now you've got desert archers. All right, Th this is going to get, it might get a little bit confusing. So I'll, I'll try my best to explain it. So, these guys are the, the they're, they're like a hussar basically. You can think of these guys as a hussar. We'll delete you. We don't we don't want you. Uh, th that's probably the best way to think of them. They're, they're just a hussar. They're six point seven five movement speed, desert rated, but they're quite cheap. One hundred and forty coin. It's not too bad. They're, they're expensive on the uh, the coin side of things. This is the desert archer. So think of it as a think of it as a longbow at range and a yumi archer from close. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can see down here. It's actually got two different modes. It's got volley mode and defend mode. And take a look at the ranges on those. So you've got 20 and 12. So what I'm going to do, if I walk up really... Or if, if I sit back, watch the animation on these guys. You see right there? See that animation? It's exactly like the longbow. But look what happens when I get up close. Bam. Just like the Yumi Archer. Bam. Just like the Yumi Archer. Just nice and quick. But as units get further away... Look at the animation just like the longbow. So it's one of those units. It's a little bit more complex. How exactly do you use it? I don't know. We'll work it out though. We'll get there. 4.25 movement speed, 30% resistance. Pretty cool. Uh, so it's also got, uh, so the stances don't change anything. And the reason why I'm saying that is because that actually matters. Your stance matters. Now, if you've used the Nizam Fusilier before from the Ottomans, you will be familiar with stance changing. Stance changing changes the uh, abilities of your units based on the stance that it's in. And the Desert Warrior is a unit that specializes in that. So we take a look at the Desert Warrior. It specifically says, Hardy and secretive Javelin Warrior that excels at using a large shield to the greatest effect in different fighting positions. Different fighting positions being the key right there. So you might be looking at the stats and being like, all right, those are pretty decent stats. Like 150 HP, that's the same as a musket. It's got range resist, that's pretty good. It's only got 15 attack, so that's not a lot. Oh, but actually it's got a 1.5... Uh, rate of fire so that's pretty decent when you think about it and also it's got like a melee attack just like a musket it's got the bonus against, against cavalry well guess what it's actually crazier than that because it's got different modes so you can you can see how how uh how well we're firing or how well we're microing right here okay so let's let's say that instead of this guy uh we've got some cavalry that are dealing with us and they come into melee so what do we do we switch over to melee but take a look at the resistance here I switch to melee, the resistance switches to melee with it. So now the Hussars are doing less damage to me in melee because I've got melee resistance as well. And you thought that was crazy. Things are about to get a lot more crazy. Now, I will tell you guys first and foremost, I have already put forward a balanced suggestion about the next thing that I'm about to show you. So before you put your pog champs in the chat, just remember, okay, I've already said this needs to be changed. So here we go. If you put it into the defense or the defend mode or the stand ground, take a look at this resistance. Get ready. 50% range resist. 50% siege resist. 50%. And they still go fast. 
and they still go fast and they have they have a really cool animation as well like I, I love the way that they stand in their formation like this it's it, it's definitely one of the coolest formations you can see that they're they all compact around the center so i i've i've put forward a balance suggestion with this already and i've said look probably need to tone this down a little bit like I, I i think that it's cool having this but i think 50 percent is a little bit crazy basically you've got a 300 health musketeer that does 30 damage each attack because it's got double the rate of fire and it's got 24 siege it's like it's a pretty good and on top of that it's it's relatively cheap like it's 30 food 70 coin like it's not crazy it's it it, it takes a lot of population but that's it. Uh, and then the same goes for the uh, stand ground. So it's the exact same stand or a different stance, uh, but it has the same stats. So I think that that's going to change. Maybe you might see the, uh, see a speed change or something like that, but you understand the general idea of what the unit's intended to do. So you've got your Hussar unit that is your first option. You've got your Archer unit, which is a bit like a Yumi, a bit like a Longbow. It's kind of a, a hybrid between the two. And then you've got this guy, which is just an absolute beast. Honestly, this guy is a beast, even just in this mode. If you didn't even have this mode here, which is obviously the best mode, but if you didn't even have that, it's still like a really, really good unit. I'm a big fan of the unit. But let's take a look at what our other options are. So we're going to delete all these, and we're going to drop down our next building, which is going to be our... Let me, let me see. It's called a War Camp. All right, so the War Camp is this building right here and so this is going to act as your barracks and stable in one uh one building so in age two you've only got uh op available three units you do have available a fourth unit but we'll talk about that in a little bit uh so the first unit is this guy here the javelin rider so this is not a unique unit this is actually also shared with the hauser so this guy is basically a dragoon unit think of it as a dragoon unit uh but it, it throws its arrow now, uh, what do we got going on back here? We've got some state militia in here. Someone's doing a little bit of laming over here. Why don't you attack me like a man over at the front? Uh, and so, they've got very low damage, but keep in mind, they are quite uh, quite cheap. So, a, a Dragoon is 90 food, 90 coin. Uh, but check out the multipliers that they've got. So, we've got five in melee. Uh, so, pretty decent. They don't have any uh, stance changes. I I've checked all the units for stance changing now. It's just, it's it's something that scares me. But you can see, here's, here's the Badger. You know, this is like, it's got 60 HP or something here, yeah, 65 HP. You can just see how little damage uh, they're doing even to the Badger. Uh, but keep in mind, the, the big thing with these units is that they've got that very high rate of fire. So they're an archer unit, so they're going to have that higher rate of fire. And that's, uh, that. I do think they are quite decent. Uh, the only thing to really note is that they kind of need to stand still and fight. Because if you take a look, they, they kind of they need that wind-up time. They're, they're a bit like the longbows. They need that wind-up time. They're not like a Yumi. They don't get their shot off immediately. So that's the first thing. So that that's the first unit. Next unit that we're going to be taking a look at is this guy right here. So the Gaskenya. So think of this as like the bread and butter of the... Uh, the Ethiopian army, in my opinion, this is the bread and butter of the Ethian, e Ethiopian army. So these guys right here, you would have seen in the game that I played that I would have, I was using these guys here. So once again, no stance changes uh, affects the stats. Uh, it, they are just, this is their base stats. So quite, quite strong units. So we've got uh, 65 food, 30 wood. So a, a very affordable unit. Uh, es essentially your standard musketeer, but it's got a four times bonus against cavalry. So pretty decent. Uh, it's also got a 14 range, which is quite good. So very nice for kiting. Uh, slightly less health, though. So that's something to keep in mind. But 4.5 movement speed. Definitely a great unit. Uh, a unit I'm a big fan of. Now, the third unit that you can make is the Shuttle Warrior. Oh, that's not the Shuttle Warrior. That's the Shuttle Warrior. So the Shuttle Warrior, think of it as a Coyote Runner, as a Chimu Runner. It is that very uh, standard shock infantry unit see the tag for it down there so it's got 170 hp which is kind of high when you think uh just about how high that is because this is only a one population unit it's not a two population unit so it's got 55 food 50 coin it's also got a, a population of one so if you've got two of those guys it's basically like uh 340 hp that's a, that's a fair amount of a fair amount of uh of uh of HP. I see Big Jaden R in the chat. How you doing, Big Jaden R? Good to see you here, mate. How you doing, Cobber? Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, we've got a little bit of an attack over here. The Gatling guns are over here. We might just move everybody over. We'll get the Gascania over. You can take a look at, at the Shuttle Warriors just doing their thing. But, uh, you know, they're, they're very... They don't have any upgrades, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, when I say upgrades, I mean from the home city. Uh, they do have upgrades uh, that you can get, just your standard upgrades from the, uh, the war camp, so the elite infantry. 
uh, upgrade. So there, there you go. We absolutely shreked him. So those are the units that you've got available to you in the second age. But wait, there's more. Temenya's gunpowder unit attack increased. Neftenya's can be trained in the commerce age. Let's see what's the Neftenya. So let's give it a let's give it a bit of a train. So this is the Neftenya. This is a skirmisher unit. It has high HP, uh, but relatively low attack. It's it's got the same attack as a as a Dutch skirmisher actually. Uh, oh god. Uh, I, I thought I, I thought my computer just died. I was looking at it. Nothing was moving. My clicks weren't working, but it works out. I, I, I was just having a stroke. Um, and uh, so with these, one of the things to remember is that you can get these available to you um, only through sending this card or going up to the third age. Whoa! Kill some Americans for me. Reverse colonialism. Yeah, don't you worry. I'll be doing it definitely not, Salta. Sol don't you worry. So this is the Neftenya, 30% range resist, so not too bad, so a pretty decent skirmisher unit. So there's a lot of different units that you can make in Age 2. But we haven't really even scraped the surface yet, because there's actually even more units that you can get. So you can get mercenaries from the home city, so w one of the examples is this guy right here, the Band of Cannoneer Mercenaries that you can send. So these guys are Abus guns, but they're better Abus guns, and I'm going to explain why they're better. Abus guns overkill things. They have a lot of attack, but they always overkill things. They do way too much damage. These guys have only got 33 attack, and they've actually got Portuguese voices, which makes them three times cooler than the Ottoman voices. I'm just killing. Uh, I'm just killing. I'm just kidding. All my Turkish fans, I'm just kidding. Ottoman voices are cool as well. Don't worry. So this is the Portuguese uh, cannoneer that you've got. And so these guys shadow tech throughout the ages. So if we go up to the next age. Uh, so let's go up to the next age. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys. So we can, uh, we'll go up with the Somalis. So you get to see the salami uh, from the Somalis. So we'll do that now. And so as I've gone up with the Somalis, I've now unlocked them at my, uh, at, at my palace over here. So there's two different, I was going to say salami, two different Somali units. So you can see we've got this Somali Darud. Whoa! Sam 8872 coming in hot. Thank you very much, Sam. Great to see you back with the Prime. Seven months, that's a lot. So, you've got the Elite Somali Darud. Now, keep in mind, these guys, uh, you can only pay for them with that all-important resource that we've talked about before, Influence. You've also got access to the Elite Somali Issa. Uh, now, keep in mind, you can get these units in Age 2. It really just comes down to what you want to get access to and what you want to what you want to achieve. Um so that's it. So moving on to age three. So the next... Hey, fellas. One of the things that we actually didn't touch on in the stream last night is the age three cavalry unit that is available to the Ethiopian. So it's this bad boy down here. It's called the Aromo Warrior. So I completely forgot about this. It's the same cost as a Curaseer. So let's take a little look at it. So it, even though it's got the same cost as the Curaseer, I don't think... In, in my opinion, it's not as strong as the Curaseer. And I'll explain why that is. So first and foremost, it's got less health. Second of all, if you take a look at the classes that it's got, or the type of unit that it is, it's a ranged cavalry, which means that it's counted by skirmisher units. It's also a hand cavalry and a heavy cavalry, which means it's counted by dragoon units. So this guy right here is kind of like a rifle rider or a hacker pellet in that it is counted by both of those units. Now, it's actually got a ranged attack. So it's basically, it's like a longer ranged hacker pellet. So we'll take a look at exactly what that looks like here. You can see it's got, it's got the musket. Uh, so that's something to consider. One of the things to note, though, is you can obviously take it and put it into melee mode if you want to use it like that for raiding, because it's going to do a lot better against villagers, typically, because uh, you can see that it's got a 0.25 bonus against villagers in the ranged mode. But this unit, in my opinion, I think that it is a unit that, when it comes to the composition of uh, the Ethiopians, that it's not really going to be effective, just primarily because it's countered very easily by those Dragoon and Skirm masses, which are going to be very common in those European civilizations. All right, back to the rest of the video. Moving on to Age 3, so the next, the, the very first thing to note is that you've got this upgrade at your uh, palace. Imported cannons. Enables falconets, culverins, and mortars to be purchased using influence. So you research this, bam. Now you've got falconets, now you've got culverins, now you've got mortars that you can train from your palaces, but keep in mind, you're not going to be paying 
You're, you're not going to be paying the, the normal rates for them. Where are my villagers? I've got to make more houses. So you're not going to be paying the normal rates for them. You're going to be paying... the Brazilian Empire, Civ. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll put it forward, Osmar. I'll put it forward. So you are, you can make falconets. Now, these are just normal falconets. They're not like anything... They're not consulate falcs or anything like that. They're just normal falconets. Uh, but you can also train uh, the culverin as well. If, if you need the culverin, if you're in a pinch. So there's, there's that as well. Uh, that, that uh, you've got access to. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, there are uh, other upgrades that you can get. So, as you continue going up through the ages, you're going to continue unlocking new units. So, now, let's say, for example, I want to unlock these guys, the Sudanese Devrishes. I can do that. So, I can I can go here, and now I've got access to the Sudanese Devrishes, wherever they may be. Here they are, the Sudanese Devrishes. Now, keep in mind, these guys all Shadow Tech. If you don't know what Shadow Tech is, that means that those units are automatically going to upgrade without you having to pay for it. I have to pay for these units to upgrade. So, you see, I click this button here, Elite Infantry. But these guys, the Cannoneers, these guys upgrade automatically. They Shadow Tech, and you can see these ones are Champion ones as well. And then we've got more. So the Gascanias, they're not. But uh, do we have any? I don't think we've got any other ones in here. Falconets, they automatically tech up to field guns. Culverin, up to Culverin Royale. Mortars, I think they're automatically as howitzers. So you've or, or, automatically got that. But now I will show you the Pista de Resistance. The big boy. The beefy gun. The one and only, my favorite. There he is. Isn't he just so beautiful? The Sebastopol Mortar. Oh, my Lord. All right. We're going to go have some fun with this. I'm going to show you now. Keep in mind, you've also got the Gatling gun, so we'll, we'll, or the Gatling camel. So I'm, I'll make sure I get that one out as well, just to show you guys. So we'll go up with the Arabs. So that's going to unlock the Gatling camel for us. Where is it? It's over here. Uh, and if you're, if you're wondering, yes, it also unlocks the Mameluke as well uh, that, that you can build with influence. Now, keep in mind, that, that's the key thing. It's with influence, okay? You, you're making this with influence. So, it's it's not like you can just use coin. Influence is a difficult thing to gather. Uh, whereas, like, if you're looking for, for coin, that, that's obviously not the case. So, now we've got the Gatling Camels. We've got the Sebastopol Mortars. We've gone up to age 5. Now, keep in mind, uh, Gatling Camels, you can only train them once you reach age 5. That's that's how great they are, how important they are. You can have a look at the stats right there. They are just the absolute most hilarious units for hit and run. Uh, so, let's, uh, let's, let's find a few Mortar Shots first. I think we'll just... We'll take that down. Uh, so, you've got two modes when it comes to the Mortar Shots. First one is a, think of it as like a, a sniper shot, which is this one here. Second one is explosive shot. Uh, so, our Gatling camels are under a bit of trouble. So, I think we'll deal with these the appropriate way. We'll send them off for a little bit of a fly over the cliff. And so, keep in mind that these units, they do a very low damage to enemy artillery. So, you can see the amount of damage that they're doing to the culverin here. Now, I guess that is an Imperial culverin. But, because the, they do have a long range, uh, but they, they don't do particularly well against artillery because they've got a 0 0.1 bonus against them. Okay, so it, it's something very significant to consider when you're playing, is that you're not going to be able to use these as culverin, because that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, I've got a shipment of one of these in Fortress Age. I can send this to deal with two falconets. Wrong. They don't count as two falconets because they only do one-tenth of the damage to falconets. So let's go take a look at Gatling Camels. I think these are probably going to be the funniest units to raid with. So they've got a very high movement speed. Uh, you don't have to unpack and pack them up. You can just simply move them and, and scoot, shoot and scoot, shoot and scoot. So you can come in, shoot and scoot, and then move on after your rounds are finished. Just like that, and then move out. So really, really good units for raiding in the late game. Uh, going to be very, very effective. They also chop down uh, trees. Now, keep in mind that these guys have got the artillery tag. So if your opponent's got culverin, it's, you can, they're going to be dealing with you very effectively. But you can just see the amount of damage that's coming out there. That's a 1,200 hit point hero. And he's getting absolutely shredded by this. Here, check this out. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it feel good? And you just keep shooting and scooting. They're, they're very, very strong units. Uh, but... Uh, that is it, fellas. Now, in addition to this, keep in mind that there are units in the home city that you're going to be able to access with the Ethiopians, as well as other units that you're going to have access to through the Alliance system, aging up with your town center. But other than that, that is your overview on the, the all of the units for the Ethiopians in the brand new expansion. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.